Okay, so how do we solve this equation? Well, I'm going to explain exactly how we solve this type of equation in algebra, but uh, when you're solving any equation in algebra, you can't uh, solve uh, that particular equation unless you know what type of equation it is. So the first thing you want to do is to see if you can identify what type of equation this is. And let me go ahead and give you a clue. It has to do with these little things right here. So if you know what type of equation this is, go to put that into the comment section. Better yet, go ahead and solve this equation. Put your solutions into the comment section. But any of you out there taking any sort of algebra course is going to have to um, know how to solve this type of equation. Of course, I'm going to uh, tell you here in just one second what type of equation this is, and we'll walk through the steps to solve it. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, if you think you're bad at math or if you're failing at, uh, at mathematics, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, All students can be successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, you got to be willing to work hard, okay? And some of you may need to work harder than you currently are. So you got to be, uh, be willing to put in the effort to learn any subject, and math is no different uh, when it comes to that. And the second thing you need is great math instruction, clear and understandable. And that's where I think I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video, but I'm telling you right now, it will uh, help you out big time. Also, if you happen to be preparing for some sort of test with the math section, things like um, uh, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACER, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can help you out. If you homeschool, have great middle and high school homeschool math courses, you might want to check out. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to help me out by liking it and subscribing to my channel. Okay, so what type of equation are we dealing with? Well, if you said absolute value, I'm going to go ahead and give you a nice little happy face for being such a great math student. Yes, this is an absolute value type of equation, but it's a little bit more involved than the basic equation. So let's go ahead and talk about that right now, and then we'll talk about the steps to solve this type of equation. So the first thing you want to notice is that these little bars right here indicate that this is an absolute value function. Now here we have an equal sign, so this is an absolute value equation. Now before you tackle this equation, it's important that you already know how to solve something like this, x plus 4, an absolute value of x plus 4 is equal to, let's say, 9. Okay, so this is a more basic type of absolute value equation, but effectively we're going to be doing uh, more or less the same thing. So if you don't know how to solve these type of equations right here, this video, go ahead and continue to watch it, but I have additional videos on absolute value equations. As a matter of fact, I have a good amount of, of uh, videos on my YouTube channel, plus uh, any one of my algebra courses in my math help program will explain this. And by the way, if you need some math notes, some algebra notes specifically that goes over absolute value and all uh, the rest of uh, the topics in algebra, you can find links to those in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's talk real quickly on what we need to do to solve this absolute value equation. So the first thing is this. The way this absolute value equation is written we can't really do anything with it right now. What you need to do is isolate this absolute value and get one number to this right-hand side. So in other words, we want to get this down to something like this, 3x minus 7, absolute value 3x minus 7 equals, oh, I don't know, let's say 12. Okay, so we're going to have to take some steps to clean this up, to rewrite it this way. And at this point, I'll uh, explain the uh, the rest of how to continue to solve this, but this is the, the more basic absolute value type of equation that I'm suggesting that you already should know how to do. But uh, let's go ahead and explain how we need to kind of work on uh, rewriting this absolute value equation right here so that we're kind of ready to go and take the next step. So the first thing is this. Think of this whole absolute value um, function part of the equation. This part right here, just think of it as some temporarily like some variable in your head. So for example, let's just make up a variable one half. Let's just say this is a uh, y. We'll use a different variable other than x plus five is equal to eight. Okay. So what you want to do here is isolate the y on one side of the equation. So what would I do? I would subtract 
five from both sides of the equation, that would give me one half y is equal to three. And then here, we'll go to continue right here, one half y is equal to three. So to solve for y, I can multiply both sides of the equation by two. So y is equal to six, okay? So effectively, you wanna be taking the same steps, but you don't wanna be messing with this absolute value um, function part of the equation. Think of it just as one variable. Now, here is another thing that students do that is a very common mistake. Sometimes they'll confuse absolute value bars or this function here uh, with parentheses. In other words, they'll think, okay, maybe I can do this one half times three X minus seven. And here you can take the uh, and, uh, this one half and distribute it to the things in, uh, inside of these parentheses. Now in algebra, you can definitely do this because these are parentheses, this is the distributive property. So I would have three halves X minus seven halves. So this is correct. However, parentheses, okay, and absolute value functions are entirely different things. You cannot distribute this number to the inside of what's inside the um, absolute value function. Okay, so just make sure you understand that a lot of students tend to make that error. Okay, so if you were tempted to do so, I understand why that is the case, but um, you cannot do that, all right? So again, just think of this as some sort of variable, something like y, and just think through the steps you need to do to isolate this part of the equation. So if you wanna go ahead and pause the video and work along uh, with uh, with me, let me switch this to eight, then I think that would be a good use of your time here, but let's go ahead and finish this up. Okay, so again, first step is I'm gonna go ahead and isolate this absolute value part on one side of the equation, that would be the left-hand side of the equation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and subtract five from both sides of the equation. So I don't, I'm not showing all the steps here because I'm assuming you're up to speed on your basic algebra when we, uh, when we subtract five from both sides of the equation, we get one half absolute value of three X minus seven is equal to a positive three. Okay, so again, just reference what I was talking about uh, earlier here, real quick when we are solving for y, we're just effectively taking the same steps. Okay, so now to get this absolute value part all by itself, I got one half times this, this uh, absolute value function equal to three. So I can go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by two. And one way you can write that is just putting brackets around the entire thing. So this is gonna be two. Now why two? Well, two is the LCD, uh, so when I multiply this two times this, I'm going to get uh, two times one half is one. Okay, so one times the absolute value of three X minus seven. Well, you don't really write that one. It's just simply gonna be three, absolute value of three X minus seven when I'm done. So two times one half is one. I don't need to write the one. It's just implied that it's there. So now I have my absolute value um, all by itself on the left-hand side, but I also have to multiply this two by the right-hand side. So two times three is six. Okay, so this is the stage where now this is a more basic absolute value equation. Okay, now if you don't know what absolute value is or have a basic understanding of it, then again, you wanna review some more um, basic uh, videos that I've made, but let's just talk about this real quick. If I said uh, the absolute value of some number is a positive six, okay, what is that number? Okay, if I take the absolute value of what number, uh, what would that, and my answer is six, what number did I plug in to this absolute value function? Okay, so hopefully some of you said, well, you could uh, take six and plug it in there because the absolute value of six is positive six, but you can also plug in a negative six because absolute value of negative six is also a positive six. So when it comes to absolute value equations, you're always gonna have two answers. So three X minus seven must either be six or negative six. And so we're gonna set up two equations, three X minus seven is equal to a positive six or three X minus seven is equal to a negative six. And then we're gonna go ahead and solve these respective equations. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and add seven to both sides of the equation. I get three X is equal to 13. And I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by three. So I get X is equal to 13 over three. That's one solution. And here, when I add seven to both sides, I'm gonna get three X is equal to one. And then I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by three. So X is equal to one third. Now, if you're having any difficulty understanding this basic um, 
equation solving steps, then again, you know, review what you need to review. Okay. It's, it's perfectly okay to be like, boy, I don't think I know this so well. The main thing in learning is to first identify what you know and don't know. Okay. You should always mentally be like, okay, I know this, but I don't really know this. So when you know something, you can get confidence in this. If you don't know something, the worst thing you can do is be like, hmm, I hope I don't see that again, <laughs> because you definitely will see this again. Make this a little list of things that you don't really know. Go back and review and strengthen that, and then these things will move over to your no list. Okay, that's how you uh, improve in mathematics. I could just tell you right now, if you don't take the effort to review the things you don't know or maybe you should have learned, then you're always going to continue to struggle. Okay, so uh, you know, again, uh, just because you don't understand something, that's actually a good thing if you can identify it and go back and review it. But for those of you who already knew this, well, I must go ahead and just reward you with a lovely, happy face. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and hook you up with a good old 1987 flat top haircut, an A plus, 100%. And we'll throw in a few stars just for good order. This was an impressive haircut back in the day, just like your ability to do absolute value equations, okay? So again, um, this is something you're absolutely going to see if you're taking any sort of algebra course, whether that be Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, it doesn't make a difference. Absolute value is a big deal. And there's a lot more to know about absolute value as well, okay? So here we have equations, but then you can also have inequalities, you need to know how to graph absolute value functions, which look like a V. Uh, there's a lot more you need to know about absolute value other than this. So if this is like, wow, that's a lot of material. Well, you know, again, math is a lot of stuff. That's why you have to work hard on uh, learning it. But um, if you're taking good notes and just taking it one skill at a time, you will eventually get very good in mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.